With the introduction of the Sunken Kingdom in Season 4, this world deep below the waves has awoken and players can uncover six new siren shrines, each of which is an individual location to go and explore, uncover all the secrets and find this new coral treasure inside. There's also three treasuries where players can experience on-demand combat with ocean crawlers, sirens and coral skeletons deep below the waves to uncover a vault full of coral treasure. Instead of expanding where players can experience on-demand combat with ocean crawlers, sirens and coral skeletons deep below the waves to uncover a vault full of coral treasure. Instead of expanding outwards with new islands, what if we expanded and allowed players to explore downwards? Because that would mean that it would fit more seamlessly into our existing experience. These new locations would be in and between our existing islands and outposts, fit seamlessly into the adventures that you have today. We're going to learn more about the ancients and events that took place before the pirates even entered the Sea of Thieves. So I guess this season we're looking into the past rather than the future. We're hoping that it will focus players in certain locations, so instead of sort of spreading everybody out, we still have these areas where players might congregate and there'll be the usual kind of interactions there whether that's friendly or not. So the main difference is between the shrines and the treasuries are the shrines are very exploratory. You've got these huge structures within the sunken kingdom which you must go down and explore the, all the different nooks and crannies for hidden treasure and secrets and this is going to be a real for those who are really interested in the lore and the untold stories of both the merfolk and the, uh, the ancients. And then the treasuries are much more focused on the combat side of things. In A Pirate's Life we've created these two new awesome underwater AI types in the ocean crawlers and the sirens. And then this was a place where we could really show off those AI types in an arena-like environment. With the Siren Treasuries, these are marked on your map at all times, but when they are awake and when there's treasure being guarded in there, you'll also see a shimmer on the surface of the water, and when you dive down, all the coral on the outside of it will be lit up. If you go inside, while it's in this kind of awoken state, you'll be able to battle waves of ocean crawlers, sirens, coral skeletons, and if you defeat them all, the vault will open and you get all of the wonderful coral treasures inside. With treasuries, all of them can be active at the same time, and with that comes its own balance. So they cycle between states of active to inactive and then back. People can be incorporating it into their usual play session so they can be on their way to an island and they'd go, 
oh, there's a treasury that's open, let's go. It becomes kind of a natural part of your sort of play session. normally playing. So in terms of the difference between the Siren Shrines that are coming and the Siren Treasuries, the Shrines are really exploratory. You will see them marked on your map, but you can also see a shimmer on the surface of the water. So you might not be planning to visit one, but you might go past a location and think you want to have a dive down and see what's down there. And each of these individual six locations is a completely different shrine inside. So it's a different area to explore with different ways that you're going to have to solve puzzles, maybe use siren statues. To raise water levels traverse through flooded areas, traverse through dry terrain and throughout the shrine you'll be finding all this new really valuable coral treasure that you can take back to the trading companies. In the pirate's life we sort of introduced the Siren Queen and we're going to expand on that now by players will be able to find out more about the Siren Queen and about about the sirens and their history. They'll be able to go down and, and visit these structures that the sirens have built, and each one sort of has a different theme, and it was used by the sirens in some way. Depending on which shrine you visit, there's going to be a completely different array of puzzles and enemies to fight. So some of them are forgotten ancient ruins that have been built around, and you'll find trapped coral skeletons that have been there for who knows how long. But in other shrines, it's coral skeletons that have been there for who knows how long. But in other shrines, it's much more puzzle focused. And you'll find in shrines like Ocean's Fortune, the ocean crawlers have repurposed shipwrecks into these mechanisms with pulleys and capstans. And players will have to work out how they can navigate from the bottom all the way to the top. When it comes to the design, Designing of environments in the Sunken Kingdom, we can really go a bit more crazy with verticality because obviously when you're on land you can just fire a cannon over to where you need to be, but we have a lot more control over the platforming and just general gameplay. It's where you, you're swimming in a confined space. The main thing is making sure that the space is navigable so that players can easily move around the space and they can see what they need to see. Leading on from that, you also move more slowly than you would do if you were running around above the surface, which means that the environments are really dense. There's just detail around you constantly, which has been really nice for us from an art point of view. Hopefully the environments themselves will tell you a bit about what the sirens and ocean crawlers were up to in these locations. Be built around landmarks like sunken ruins, which you'll see in the ancient Tears Shrine. And then others are much more sort of mechanism based where we've got repurposed shipwrecks but players will find loads of different ways to play. The exterior took quite a bit of work because again you know there's so much space and you don't really know where the player is going to swim from like they, they could come from anywhere so you think it's really good and like it works well and then someone plays it and they get lost and then you're like ah, I got it I got to find a way to make it more like obvious to the player for them to know where to go. We tried to find a key recipe where there'd be sort of glowing coral. So like when they're swimming from afar, they know exactly where to go. And so that was like the main key signal for all of the treasuries and shrines, like look for the glowing coral. That's kind of where the start point is of this, this um, adventure. atmosphere of the Sunken Kingdom, it really is this other world deep below the waves that has now awoken and it's kind of 
uncovered for a long time and because of this it's very kind of mythical and almost ethereal in places and very beautiful and almost peaceful at times even though you will face adversity there. I think the main thing that comes to me when I play is just the sense of mystery because it is under the waves like no one has been down here yet it's just what are we uncovering here this is completely different to anything that we've done so far it's really exciting from that point of view When creating a new ambience, the first thing we look at is like, okay, how long is the player supposed to, to stay here? If you can stay quite a long time in the Sunken Kingdom, then you have to, to come up with something that's a bit light and not too obnoxious, uh, something that on purpose is not bringing to your attention too much, but still full of detail and magic. The atmosphere that, that I started working on almost brought a slight religious vibe to it, almost as though you were stepping into a temple of sorts. So I looked at sort of some, some quite low tonal drones and kind of bassy drones that kind of come in and out, almost a bit like a really low choir kind of humming in some ways. and also weave some other vocal elements in it to be reminiscent of the sirens and almost feel like the siren kind of presence is, is around you at all times. I personally really love the new treasury music that's been added. This is a battle track that will play while you're fighting in the treasuries and it's really evocative of all these underwater themes of the sirens, the ocean crawlers and the coral skeletons and it really amps up the atmosphere as you're fighting your way through the waves. Chloe did a fantastic job at writing a lot of new music for the Sunken Kingdom. Um, and that also is randomised and kind of weaves in and out and that kind of unifies with, with that ambience and also other little spot effects like the waterfalls, the mechanisms, water dripping and the cave ambience and things like that. With the Sun Kingdom it's, it's almost a unique opportunity to expand the world down so we were loving that idea and then with that comes sort of like other aspects we have to balance in with that because players are going to have to leave their ships slightly unattended, swim down and it's that sort of risk and reward we're looking to balance. So we want to entice players down there and we need to reward them for taking that risk of swimming down. The new treasure that we've made for the Sunken Kingdom is it's very special because it's only found in the Sunken Kingdom. You can't find it anywhere else on the Sea of Thieves. It's this kind of cool coral encrusted with all sort of barnacles on it uh, and we've created treasure for each of the different companies. And with that we've got the merchant coffers which are a new commodity that can be sold to the merchant alliance that only fits in one hand and can be stored in collector's chests as well. And keen eyed players as well can find coral message in a bottles washed up on the shores of the beaches. If you open one of these, you'll find a very mysterious note inside that will send you to one of the shrines or treasuries. And on doing so, you can find the breath of the sea, which is this mysterious substance in this bottle. The law is that it contains the same stuff that's in the, the siren gems, so there's this kind of magic inside of it, so I don't want to spoil too much about that one. But <laughs> so as you're finding all this exciting new coral treasure and this breath of the sea in the shrines and treasuries, obviously you're away from your ship at that moment in time, and rather than having to travel and, and swim with your treasures up and down from your ship, you can actually visit these merfolk treasure statues within the shrines and treasuries. So these statues allow you to store everything that you find. And then when you get back to the surface, you'll be able to retrieve all of that treasure from the friendly merfolk that are waiting there for you with the shell that they've carried on their back. 
all of your treasures inside. Players can wait as long as they want to retrieve that treasure, but they have to retrieve it above the shrine where it was. Stored. They can't just go to any other shrine and find somewhere where there's no players and retrieve it. They have to get it from that location. And at that point, it's, it can be stolen again by other players, it's, it's back to being vulnerable. But in that swim up, swim down phase, it is stored and safe for that crew. For players that explore the Sunken Kingdom, there's 30 law books written by six different authors. Uh, this allowed us to look at the Sunken Kingdom from different perspectives. Each of the authors is writing about the shrine that they're in. So you also get to see your surroundings from the perspectives of characters within the Sea of Thieves. Players will learn about the Siren Queen and her king and who he was before he became a siren. A little more about the ancients and their relationship with those that dwell beneath the waves, and how the Silver Blade got on the wrong side of the Siren Queen. There is a whole host of new commendations and achievements to unlock with the Sunken Kingdom, and with those commendations as well, they will grant you access to the Sunken Sorrow's ship parts and weapons. But also, for those players who really find everything, who scour all of the shrines and uncover all the mysteries within, they can also purchase a very special voyage from Lorena at the Bilge Rats, which tells a story of a legend of the Sunken Kingdom. When it comes to the sirens specifically as part of season four, sirens are something that have been talked long about in folklore. But the fact that we can bring that to life, answer that question, what would these creatures be like in a place like the Sea of Thieves? A sailor's tall tales or nautical folklore itself coming to life. Someone with an active imagination would daydream about those things or someone with an adventurous spirit would think about what those things are, but Sea of Thieves should bring those things to life. So what's so exciting about the narrative aspects for Sea of Thieves is that we're able to continue to build on this rich lore and story as we develop Sea of Thieves as a service. In the Sunken Kingdom release, you will find parts of stories that tie into stories that you've heard long ago. And I love that aspect of being able to shed new light on mysteries and give players more information about things, as we also obviously building new things as well, but just enriching the world. It's incredible as well to see how our players and our community have responded to the story and the law that we've released in the past and it's great to have the opportunity it's very unique to see if they used to have the opportunity to just keep continually building in that while we're also introducing new aspects as well so the sunken kingdom itself is obviously a huge addition for season four but it's not the only thing that players can expect alongside that you also have your seasonal rewards events along the way and of course we're always going to be adding those quality of life fixes as well Our players are the main characters. And the way we tell our stories, the way we put players right at the heart of that is something unique to our world and what we can do. So as we look to the future of Sea of Thieves and the ambition that we have to continue telling these stories, and making the world feel like a more dynamic stage where surprises and unforeseen events can take place. That's something you'll see us do more and more as we progress in future seasons.
I shouting? No. I feel like I'm shouting. <laughs> <laughs>